Shalom and welcome. We're here on another show of In Our Neighborhood. And today we have a unique guest. Our guest today is Itai Shimel. Did I say that correctly? You said that perfectly. Itai Shimel, who's the founder of Altsabox, which is a unique service that really connects people outside of the country and blesses directly the people inside the country of Israel. And today we're going to unpack or unbox, I should say, uh, how you do that and the unique story of how this was created and how people outside of Israel connect the people and the artists and the artisans of the land of Israel. So welcome, Itai. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on the show. So Itai, we've been at war for quite a while in this country, and people keep asking us the same question. How can we help the people in Israel? And there have been many answers over these months to how you can help in cash, in funds, in prayers, in donations. But yeah. today we get to do something that's unique. We get to do- talk about the fact that people outside of this country can help directly small businesses, artisans, people on the ground in Israel, and also enjoy something in return. And we're talking about your company, Alza, and how that works. So maybe yeah. talk us through the idea of what Alza is, uh, how you engage with people in Israel, and how people outside of this country can be blessed by what, by what happens here. Uh, for sure. So um, you're right. So many people have been asking, how can they help? And uh, Arta was, uh, was set up four years ago, actually during COVID, when also we wanted to do something to help the small businesses yeah. and the charities that were closing down. They relied so heavily on tourism. And also no one was able to come to the country, kind of similarish to what's going mm-hmm. on now. Um, so the idea was, how can we bring that experience of traveling through the land of Israel, um, tra- traveling through the land of the Bible, and how can you experience this in a meaningful way? And how can we take that experience and deliver it to your home? And at the core of our mission is at the same time you're supporting small businesses, charities, farmers and artisans that work here in Israel that make all of the products. Yeah. So the concept behind Arta was, well, we'll travel through the land of Israel city by city and then we'll find artists and charities and farmers within that city and we'll source seven to eight products which kind of really capture the essence and what it is to really experience that city. We'll put it in a box accompanied with a lot of uh, content and storytelling and scripture and um, ancient and modern storytelling, but also modern day. We'll wrap it all into a box and we'll send it to your home. So you really get a piece of Israel delivered to your home every three months, which is also directly supporting the small businesses here in Israel. I think that's beautiful. Itai, you do something very unique with your packages. It's not just the artisans, it's not just the Israel part of it, but there's a biblical story tied into every one of the boxes that you ship. Yeah. So How does that work? Yeah, well, it's it's Israel at the end of the day. So it is the land of the Bible. It would be impossible to not connect the Bible to the land of Israel and also shouldn't be done. Um, So every box is themed around, it it used to be uh, different cities, but now it's also around just different themes in general, Mm -hmm. but they're all deeply rooted within the biblical context context of that specific city or that specific theme. So whether it was um, one of our boxes which came out around Christmas time where it was was the Bethlehem box, which obviously that makes so much sense for the Christmas box, where it's all about the birthplace of Jesus. And then all the products come from artisans within Bethlehem and which are, you know, they're connected to that period of time um, and to the, you know, and to the Christmas holidays. And there's also a lot of scripture and biblical teachings inside that box to kind of like really connect you in a meaningful way. We don't just want it to be like products and that's it. It's men who make you feel very connected to your faith and men who make you feel very connected to the Bible. We want to show you where the stories actually happened and, and, um, and what occurred then, what it looks like today and what's left over. So you can really visualize the whole thing and kind of bring the Bible to life in a, in a very meaningful way. That's like a, one of the other core missions of what we do at Arza. Um, it's kind of really connected to your faith in, a, in an immersive and also tangible way. Yeah. So yeah. storytelling in every box. Yeah, storytelling in every box. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a great way to go about it. So yeah. explain about the, the name Arza, because I think it, it requires, if you don't speak Hebrew, a little more of uh, diving into to really get. Yeah, we, yeah. So we, we chose a name which we have to educate people about. Um, but uh, if you go to Genesis twelve, Genesis twelve three, sorry, um, there's a scripture which is you know we feel very connected to Israel as well, which is yeah. for those that bless shall be blessed, uh, which we feel is also incredibly important. Also, try, something which we're trying to provide and 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 facilitate through what we're doing here at Artsa, that we're trying to really allow people to kind of really bless the land and bless the people here. Mm. And if you just continue with two scripture verses to Genesis 12, 5, and it's the conversation that God is having with Abraham. And he's saying, um, you know, leave your birthplace, leave the place where you lived and go up towards the land. And the biblical Hebrew uh, for the phrase towards the land, only in reference to the land of Israel, is Arza. Uh, Eretz means the land and Arza means towards their land. And that means towards the land of Israel. And that's really what we're trying to do and deliver with every box. We're trying to 
really bring you towards the land of Haaretz. They're trying mm-hmm. to really bring you up to that land and really get you to experience the land of Israel. T- take us through, because I think a lot of people, when they would imagine Israel, they might not be aware of all the artisans that live in this country. We talk about tech. We talk about sometimes in the past 50 years ago was oranges and other citrus yeah. uh, fruits. But there is a vibrant community in this country that creates a lot. Or this unique society where it goes from like the high tech and the highly sort of like, you know, systematic uh, linear thought process. And then people that are just complete artists in every way, shape and form. Uh, what are the unique businesses that exist here that you work with and what do they make? Yeah, that, it's so true. It's people, I think, often nowadays, the narrative around Israel is more like the high tech nation. Yeah. But people don't often forget or don't know about the like the artists and farmers and the incredible organizations that are like all over the country, literally from 100%. from north in the Golan all the way down south, all the way down to Ola. And one of the the privileges, I think, of having been able to work on arts is that we get the opportunity to travel the entire country from top to bottom and meet all of these incredible people. Um, we have artisans, we have jewelers and ceramicists. We have um, incredible corporations that work with Jews and Christians and Muslims and Druze and everyone together, creating beautiful products from olive, olive oil products in the Galilee to we have organizations in Jerusalem as well who are making, uh, they're making jewelry, they're making art, they're making tapestries. There's everything, anything you can think of, anything in your home really or anything in your kitchen anything you want to hang anything you want to gift yeah there are people that are making it here in israel i, I want to delay on something because israel's a small country and one might imagine yeah. that when you say some of the words you said olive oil uh tapestries you know artwork yeah. it's well there's one thing for israel and that is so far from the reality people internally in israel will travel to jaffa to get to the number one hummus We'll travel yeah. to, I go to Abu Ghosh to get the number one kanafe, which is an Arab, uh, Arab dessert. I've been, I've been there. Yeah, we'll, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll compare notes after the show. Yeah. Uh, we'll go to one place because they make the best honey out of this you know, flower and the best, best olive oil, because olive oil is like this super nuanced product. So for someone who hasn't visited this country uh, and thinks, you know, they imagine Israel sometimes as it's or all tech or all desert or all green. Yeah. I, I think we need to say that Israel is much deeper than that. It's a vibrant, it's a, yeah. it's a very vibrant country. Yes, geographically, we're, we're tiny. It's a tiny country. But one of the, the most exciting things is actually showing people, let's say, the box from the Golan. Yeah. Also, so many of the tours that come to Israel, they hardly ever make it all the way up to the Golan Heights. And the Golan is, you know, it's lush and it's green, it's fertile. There's mountains, there's hills, there's even a yeah. ski resort. It snows in Khermon. Yeah. Like so many people don't know about it. Whenever we share about things like that which people think you know there's Jerusalem and sometimes they know about Tel Aviv they know the Sea of Galilee and you know just a giant desert and the yeah. Dead Sea maybe sometimes and our job is to try and capture really for our subscribers and for people in artists to try and find the best from all those places all over the country and kind of create products with them to put into a box so that when people also receive the box they get to really experience um, you know how diverse and how beautiful and how rich the country really is in terms of you know, flavors and sound and, and sight and, and feel and also, you know, in history and, and, and music and, but also connecting it always back to, you know, Israel is the land of the Bible and you can't take that away. And it's kind of creating this fusion of both of these things at the same time. And that's everything which we try and deliver inside the box. And you mentioned this, which I think is beautiful. You guys incorporate uh, creations of the different communities in this country, not just Jewish, not just this, but the Jewish, the Christian, as the Muslim communities are yeah. all represented in your gift boxes. The Jewish community as well. The Jewish community, yeah. They make uh, a lot of interesting things. Israel, as everyone knows, it, it, you know, it's, a, it's quite a politicized country. And we hear a lot about um, all, the, all the divisions and the splits and the divides yeah. between the Jews and the Christians and the Arabs and the Jews and everyone who's here. And even like within those communities, that, you know, there's, they each have their own sex and then there's division there. So, and there's so many people that work on highlighting the, the splits and the differences. Yeah. People talk about apartheid, they talk about so much hatred. It's just on, when you, when you go to these communities, you go to these places, you see a totally different narrative and totally different story. So for us, it's, it's important. I think we also have a responsibility to not just show, um, you know, everything from Jewish artisans or everything from Christian or Muslim artisans, but rather to try and create uh, a box which really does justice to the country as well and does justice to Israel and try and choose products from everyone. Um, you're, you're, hitting on a beautiful, you're hitting on a beautiful philosophical concept, which is that a lot, the news and a lot of people, they gravitate towards 
the extreme. Always. They gravitate towards the sensationalist. Yeah. Uh, they gravitate towards the, the anger and the fear. And, and if you love this country, and you love the Bible, and you love what happens here, you might think and you want to, you want to defend what people are saying to, about this country and about this people. Yeah. And then you, fight, you want to fight back. But I think that's, I mean, it's right to a certain degree, but it's also wrong on a certain level which is if someone is hateful and someone is deceitful and someone is negative about what, what God is doing in this country and what's happening in this country, the response to that is, among other things, is love and unity. So if their message is division and anger and hatred uh, and slander, your response is a positive story. Your response is highlighting the unity. Your response is highlighting the beauty in the people and the traditions and the flavors of this land. And I think that completely, it sort of flips everything on its head. It yeah. shows people a positive way to look at what's happening here in the country. When you travel in this land, looking for the different artisans and the different uh, products of this land to share with people outside of the country, tell us some of the stories of who you're encountering and how they get to this profession, uh, what the tradition behind it is, what the sort of the, the nature of those characters are. One of the artisans, the, one of the first ones we work with, his name is Jamil Hosh, and he lives in Bethlehem and he's a, um, He's a Hollywood craftsman. So yeah. He carves beautiful everything out of Hollywood, from like huge uh, furniture to like little sets of nativity or crosses or just you know uh, tools for your kitchen or utensils. Uh, there's an organization in the Galilee called Sindiana, and they're a corporate of um, of uh, Jewish, Muslim, and Christian women. Something I touched on before, mm -hmm. and everything which they make is made out of olive wood or olives from olive trees which grow in the Galilee. There's, there's organizations that we work with, um, uh, one which is called Susan's House in Jerusalem. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've heard of them. I have not. But it's this incredible organization that um, they take kids who've been thrown out of their homes and on the street and they bring them into, into this organization. And um, it's a home for them and their school and rehabilitation. But then they also have a, like an art therapy studio. And that's kind of as part of the process like, of, the, of the therapy they get to create. And everything which they make and they sell it kind of, they get to make the money and the revenue from it. So they start like understanding like the self-worth of their own creation. So we've worked with them to make incredible products as well. Um, when we phoned them, this was during COVID, uh, she started like crying on the phone to me because I was like, hey, we want to work with you. We'd like to order, I think it was 5,000 products then. Um, and she started crying on the phone. I was like, what, what's happened? And she goes, half an hour before you called, the bank had called us and we had like this big debt that we owed them. And if we were going to like close down and because you guys called us we're now able to continue the what an amazing story organization so i don't know it's just there's crazy things happen but i think that highlights that last piece it highlights the impact of what you're able to do yeah and my one might be concerned well you know I, i'm only buying the one box and I, i've always felt that way like you know you see you see a call to action on like how can i respond to a problem that's happening somewhere else in the world and let's say i sent a hundred bucks a thousand dollars what difference would it make to those people in that place and what's unique here, I think, is, is one, artisans or small business or family business is affected even by a small amount of orders, hundreds or thousands of units. Yeah. It's not a huge factory. And the same, the next thing is, is Israel is a tiny country. Uh, Israel is a tiny country. A, if you order tens of thousands of products from this country, it affects the economy. The impact of this war on our economy has been, as far as I can remember in my lifetime, the most substantial that I've ever seen. Yeah, it's crazy. Because we've had intifadas, we've had terror, waves of terrorism. Yeah. We've had attacks, we've had, let's call it short campaigns that affected the economy. This is different. Uh, yeah. This has had, myself included and hundreds of thousands of other Israelis have been removed from their workplaces or their businesses for months on end. Yeah. Uh, I have soldiers in reserves. I know other people who don't have a business to go back to. It's gone. Uh, there are many businesses here that were reliant on tourism or foot traffic to come through their business and buy it. Uh, people, and a lot of them live in sort of the, the periphery of the country, yeah. near the Gaza border, in the desert, in the Golan Heights, and no one can travel to those places right now, or very few people are traveling yeah. to those places. They need whatever support they can get. We're a country at war. And we're a country that needs all the help and support it can get. And I said this, I, I just got out of like over seven months of reserves. And people asked, you know, they said, well, what do you need? Well, we had material needs and people were generous and gave them. But we needed people to know that they were supported. Uh, I think the most substantial thing I saw in like the soldiers and the people of this country is knowing the people outside of the country care for them and pray for them. Yeah. And I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen that with my own eyes. Uh, when someone comes from outside of this country to tell people in this in this land during a time of war that they're loved and supported, it goes a very long way. Yeah, it goes, it goes a very long way. I even, uh, when 
when we were when we were back in reserve or when I see my friends, you'd have these people who come from the delegations that would come, let's say, from America, from Europe, yeah. and they'd come and they'd kind of part of their trip would also be to volunteer or to help with farming, but then also like go down to the soldiers and bring food or create, uh, you yeah. know, do a barbecue or something, and then the the warmth that that provides to the actual soldiers um, is like it's it's really tangible. You, you know, you can really feel that to know that they have backing and support from people who like really can would come from abroad just to show that. No, don't forget that these tourist companies or a lot of these um, companies that rely very heavily on tourism, they not that long ago came out of COVID. Yeah. And COVID was quite, you know, COVID completely brutal, brutal yes. for these companies. Yeah. And then we had like, what do we have? Like a year and a half, two years or something. I don't even know if that long of like somewhat regular tourism. And now this again, it's like they just were able to start recovering. And now they, you know, they've gone right into this and this one's, you know, pretty extreme as well. So it's really the past four years really have been incredibly tough on all of these people. Yeah. yeah. And you give them a very unique opportunity. And I like the personal touch of, of what you do, Thank which you. is it's not just like a generic, like here's so-and-so businesses or something like that. Yeah. It's, it's not a general call to action. It's a personalized story. Yeah. So walk us through the mechanics of how this works. Like if someone wants some of these boxes, they're, they're in Israel right now. We're sitting in Jerusalem right now. How does this get to their home in you know, in Idaho, how does it get to their home in the UK? Yeah, how does it work? So the way it works is you go to our website, which is artsabox.com, mm -hmm. A-R-T-Z-A-B-O-X.com. And there's just, it's very simple. There's, you can either, it's a box that comes once every three months, once every season. Um, and you can either sign up, uh, so there's a seasonal renewal. So you prepay for one season and then every season you'll receive another box and you can cancel it anytime you want. And you know, your subscription will end. Or you can prepay for an annual subscription, you'll receive a 10% discount, and then you prepaid for the full year. And then you can also cancel that whenever you want, and then I'll cancel at the end of your season, at the end of the year, or you can continue. Um, our subscribers have been with us for, for years already. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we try and keep it as simple as possible. There's just seasonal, annual, um, artsabox.com. And once you order, you should receive your first box between seven to 10 days. We try and ensure that it comes within seven days. Sometimes and for TBN viewers and viewers of this channel, there's a additional unique discount. Yes, of course. Is that correct? So, yeah, that, that, of course. So for, for viewers of this channel, we created a code which is TBNIL, IL for Israel. Uh, so TBNIL, and it's an additional 10% discount code which you'll receive on anything. So if you're ordering an annual, you'll receive 10% on top of the existing 10%. So that's a 20% discount. And if it's a seasonal box and you receive a 10% discount on the seasonal yeah, as well. What you said is interesting. You're able to get it to people in, you said, seven to 10 days from the time Maximum, they ordered. Maximum, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's very that's fast. fast. So Itai, walk us through one of these boxes, whichever one you want to pick. Uh, sure. So we can start with uh, the purple box, which is the yeah, seven biblical move this species one then. box. So like I mentioned, every box has a different theme. Mm -hmm. uh, so the theme for this box was the seven biblical species, mm -hmm. which is also um, some of the fruits and crops that grow on the land that Israel is very known for. Um, and it's also it's obviously from the Bible. So the idea here was to have a seven products. Every product is inspired by one of the different seven biblical mm. species. And then there's, uh, you know, the extra gift, which kind of tries to combine all of them together. So, so this is what, so these oh, tell you about the, about the, the products inside the box. So these are the people that made your product. So okay. you can actually connect the face, um, and a name to the person that made whatever it is. So also, we also want to show you who it is and then also the product that they made on the back and kind of why they made the product, how they became passionate about whatever craft it is that they did, you know, if, you know, it's, if very it's well a family made. business or whatever. Thank you. I mean, very um, well made. Like it's, it's a person on the ground in Israel. It's not some random product from a factory. Yeah. It's an artist yeah. uh, and it's, the handiwork of their hands. I think that's beautifully done. And then every box also, Everyone loves Israeli food when they come here. You know, yeah. Israeli food is amazing. So every box always will have um, uh, spices or something to cook with, and they will have accompanying Israeli recipes as That's well. My children's my my children's uh, favorite. Oh, really? Crispy chicken schnitzel. And you, then you have so you had an explanation here. So that explains that's like to, you know that explains further every single product inside the box mm -hmm. as well. And Sounds then amazing. we also always want to incorporate some Hebrew learning. So every box will have some different Hebrew words and the transliteration in English. So this is going to be for Shivat Aminim. So chita, which is wheat, and then we, you know, kind of teach you how to how to say it. Uh, Rimon pomegranates, and you know, they come with I love uh, something that. artwork. Um, and then there's there's a welcome card, which we call it, which is kind of that's what paints the picture for the box and like sets the tone. So that really explains in more depth um, why we chose it, what's the connection to the Bible, mm. what's the scripture which is related to it, where we kind of learn about the theme of the seven species or whatever it's going to be. 
and have some accompanying photography as well, all from Israel, of course, and kind of really try and set the tone. So that now when you go into the box, you have context, you kind of have a biblical context, you know about the people that made it, you know the stories, and then you go inside and then you kind of unbox the box. Which for us, is, it's about really trying to- Quite an experience. Yeah, create that experience before you go in. So it's also educational. But I mean, it should be. If yeah, it's someone course. outside of the country connecting to what's happening here, yeah, that's what, yeah. the storytelling is, is one, it's beautifully done. Thank you. Two, it really helps them sort of set the stage for what's coming next. Yeah, you're trying is, to really, yeah, yeah really teach them and educate them. So we have date spread. So every box will have three food products inside as well. Mm -hmm. So a uh, date spread or uh, silan, which is uh, kind of like, it's like a honey which comes from dates. Uh, very sweet, um, also very healthy. Um, and that can be used on, um, you know, your breakfast cereal or within baking or cooking or, or even for chicken. I, I, I was going to say, I use yeah. silan often. Yeah, for poultry uh, or for meat. For, for, for meat. Yeah. As a, really as a marinade for meat, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, really, really Because it's good. one, it's viscous, so it sticks. Yeah, exactly. Two, it's got this like lovely, like sort of like uh, undertones of flavor to it. Yeah. That are much different than honey. Yeah, much different. Uh, than honey. Yeah, it's it's. A, I mean, it's a staple of Israeli cuisine. Yeah, and it really works. Yeah, so this is the schnitzel spice mix, um, <clears throat> and this includes the wheat, which is kind of we wanted to tie wheat inside. So this is like the breadcrumbs which come inside, and it's also mixed with a lot of herbs, which are all grown there in the Galilee. This is a cool story. So this guy comes from a guy called Goran uh, Sarid, and he lives in Efrat, which is not too far from Jerusalem. Um, he was a navigator in the army. And he worked with us on the Galilee, uh, on the Galilee box. He started making topographically accurate candle models of different regions in Israel. So he did one of the Galilee with like the Sea of Galilee inside an actual uh, accurate um, shape of like a scaled down Sea of Galilee. And we loved working with him. And then we told him about the seven species box and we were like, hey, we'd love to work with you again. What can you think of? So he wanted to do something at Tena, which is like um, the fig. The fig. Yeah. And the idea, the idea he had was he created like a, a mold out of the bark of a fig tree. And then on the front, he carved um, the leaf the and then leaf. also put Tena in Hebrew underneath. And it's made from natural beeswax. So it smells oh, really, smells yeah, it smells really good. And then this is the, yeah, so the these, olives. These are olives from the Sindiana, which is the corporate in, um, in the galley, which works with mm. uh, Jews, Christians and Muslims. But we didn't just want to put olives because in America you can just, anyway, you, you know, you can buy olives. We wanted to have them, we wanted to like do a twist. So we asked them if they can create it with like a zata flavoring. Zata is obviously a very, um, very indigenous flavor. Yeah, it's very indigenous flavor to the land here. And so also this like o olives are not just one thing. Like in, in Israel, you have uh, like specialized yeah, flavors. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it can be the Syrian variety. Yeah. And crushed like this one is, yeah. you know, with specific spices. Yeah. And every household has sort of their thing. Yeah. This is beautiful. This is from an artist called Noah. Mm -hmm. um, and she's a paper cut artist. So she creates all of our art out of, out of paperwork, which she laser prints and then she cuts. Um, so she created this for us. Um, which is Eretz Zevat Chalavod Vash, which is a land film with milk and honey. So she laser cut and printed this paper artwork, which has the seven species, no, and then the Hebrew of Eretz Zevat Chalavod Vash, and then she put it over this beautiful background. That and is she, absolutely beautiful. And the colors are beautiful. It's like yeah. elegant. It doesn't like, you know, very well it's, done. it's very subtle, but very beautiful. This is like a serving tray with kind of pop art of uh, the seven species on it as well, which comes from an artist called Emmanuel who lives here in Jerusalem. And the last thing was, um, it's a glass printed uh, trivet, like a hot plate for your food. So just have something on the table and inspiration behind the design here was the pomegranate. Um, so that was the last product. And that's one of the boxes. What, what I love about all these things, and it's like, it's all coming to light as we unbox it, is the fact that this isn't mass produced. Mm, yeah. You know, it's, no, it's, it's yeah. all artisans. I like, I like this. Yeah. I like it be, and, I, and I want to explain it because it has layers of culture and tradition to it. Yes. It has the Judaica in it. Yeah. It has the calligraphy side of things. It has the color palette of art of the Middle East. Yeah. Uh, it's it's got a lot going to it on the artistic yeah. sense, and the fact that it's not just mass produced in the factory in China. Not that I have anything against China. Yeah. I have but, something against mass produced when it comes to yeah, art. Yeah. Uh, there's something special here. Like I really like this. Yeah. And it's unique and it's limited. Very yeah. well made. Thank you. Yeah. It's everything. Everything is is real handmade. Real handwork. Um, real handcraft um, by people who are very passionate about whatever it is that they're making uh, with like real great stories behind them often or I think almost all of these things are real family run businesses yeah. um, and and it's kind of when we choose what products to put we have to you know the storytelling the people that we work with is like uh, you know one of the core parts of, of how it is that we create the boxes 
Well, this is curated beautifully. Thank when you. I when I think about it, it's like the whole story comes to life because it's just a bit. It's a biblical story. The language, the words, yeah. the story of the people that touched this with their hands and created it. And then there's something edible. There's something touchable. There's something that will stay with you for many many years. That is that not everyone has. And you can't just buy this on Etsy or you know. No, you can't. You know. No. I think you've done something incredible here, Itai. I mean, I'm, thank deep, you. I'm deeply impressed. Thank, thank you well, so the much. The storytelling, the storytelling is top top notch. Thank you. And the the local element is, is beautiful. And the price is right. Uh, and I'll say this to our viewers: you also get a 10% discount on top of everything with. Let me see if I remember. It's altabox.com. So with the alta with a Z. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, discount code is TBNIL. Yeah. An additional ten percent. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is just beautiful. Thank uh, you. Great, great package. Thank you very much. Itai, Appreciate thank you it. for coming down. Thank you. It was a real it's pleasure really to come down. Thank you so much. It's beautiful to always be here as well. And uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.